um, we're, we're, we're at home now, we're, we're in a bit of sort of shock, um, we're not physically, we, miraculously, I don't know how we're not physically hurt, um, we were queuing to check in at the uh, desk row 8, 8, 8 code, which is fairly near the Starbucks, Starbucks, um, coffee shop, and I actually um, went towards the Starbucks to go and get a tea for my, for my partner, why not? And it was at that moment that the first explosion happened. So um, the idea of getting a tea stopped being a good one. And I ran I back um, to my partner and the ceiling was falling in. There was debris falling all around us. Um, general um, panic, I think, um, okay. the best way to describe it. And um, I, I just jumped on top of my partner and... Cut it's probably not the right time to do that, but still. us with the suitcase. Ceiling, and um, we were also um, sort of talking about it afterwards. We also realised that we were afraid that there may be um, shooting, but that didn't happen at all. There was I, I did. Why would you be afraid of shooting? There's a bomb just gone off. Why would you be thinking about that? Didn't hear any shots. Or You'd be terrified. Um, reporting that there was shouting in Arabic. I personally didn't hear, hear any shouting in Arabic where we were in. Uh, then why are you mentioning it? Eight again. Sounds absolutely terrifying, Julian. Did it seem obvious to you straight away, though, that it was a bomb? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. There was no doubt in our minds that it was a bomb. We, I think, I think the main thing that stuck in my head is the smoke, the smell of smoke, the smoke um, and it smelled like fireworks. So it didn't Probably seem was. at all that it was something from the construction in the airport. It just definitely seemed like a bomb straight away. We're seeing some pictures from inside. And there's your 22 code. How thick that is from inside the airport at the moment, and, and you can see visibly just how thick that smoke was. Julian, at what stage did you feel like it was safe to leave? So, sorry, I didn't hear you there. At what time did you feel like it was safe to leave? If you were sheltering behind your suitcases, when were you able to get up and, and walk out? Well, um, I did. Look at that guy. Cases. When were you able to get up and, and walk out? For this guy, casual as you like. Well, um, I, it's difficult to... to leave. If you were sheltering behind your Look suitcases, when were you able to get up and, yeah. and walk out? I'll see you tomorrow then. Well, All right, bye. Um, I, it's difficult to tell in the panic. I, it's, I think about 30 seconds to a minute went by when we were crashed, three code. Um, underneath our suitcase. And, um, and then we heard the airport staff shouting for everyone to evacuate as quickly as possible. Okay. So we ran from from the uh, edge of uh, row eight. Row eight again. Um, towards okay. the exit. And we were running over um, the debris from the ceiling and broken glass from my. Running over broken glass. Okay. Now the only broken glass that we've seen at the moment was from the windows on the outside of the terminal and if the blast was from the inside how is the glass also on the inside on top of the rubble from the ceiling the windows had exploded um, and there was people's baggage lying on the floor um, I think there were one or two people lying injured as well but um, and so at that point okay. we ran out so you left them. Um, into the uh, area where the where the cars pull up for the car drop off point just outside the airport and there was when we really saw um, lots of people injured um, lots of people trying to help people okay. who were injured how did they all get out there if you took 30 seconds to move and get out there how are the loads of people injured still outside? Just general confusion. Everyone on their on their mobile phones trying to call people, um, trying to call the emergency services. We we ourselves tried to help a woman who was Good man. Uh, had a bad injury on her leg and foot. It looked like it was um, sort of shrapnel from the explosion that had embedded in her shoe. Okay. And she was screaming to take her shoe off, but obviously we were saying no, don't take your shoe off because that's probably what's holding your foot together. Holding a foot together. 
um, holding and a foot I was together. Around trying to find um, trying to find ambulance people or or first aid people, but at that point, um, probably we're talking ten, fifteen minutes, but maybe less than that after the explosion. Okay. It just seemed like um, everyone needed uh, help, and there wasn't quite enough emergency service help there at that time. But then, well, there wouldn't be. Um, after another ten minutes, I would say that um, there were fleets of ambulances. So that's another ten minutes. Stuff coming into the airport area, and we could. So that's twenty-five minutes after the blast. With these 10 to 15 minutes and then another 10 minutes waiting for the ambulance. You see then that people were getting help that they needed. And Julian, now you're home. He's home. How are you feeling? Like he's be alive? Yeah, it's weird. We're watching it on the television and kind of thinking we were there two hours ago, just three hours ago. Uh... Two to three hours ago, okay. He said two first, but we'll go with the three. Now, we've just determined that it took him, what, 30 seconds to get out, and there were people already outside injured. Not sure how could, that could have happened. He said he mulled around trying to find help for 10 to 15 minutes, then another 10 minutes after that, the ambulance started to come, so that's 25 minutes. Closed off, or the transport was closed off. Nobody could get in or out, according to the news channels yesterday. He was then home, fine, no problems. So he's home, doesn't seem to be any kind of shock whatsoever. And for some reason, he decides to call the BBC. Because let's face it, the BBC wouldn't have contacted him. Because how would they have known who he was? So he doesn't mention giving a statement to the police or even getting checked over by the ambulance. Fair enough, he might not have been injured. So we're assuming that the first call he made was to the BBC. Why? And if you or I phoned the BBC and said, I'm a witness to something that just happened, wouldn't you need to verify that as opposed to just speak to them on the phone? How did you? It was literally the ceiling was falling in around us and, and the glass was exploding around us and, and so many of the people were... Glass was exploding. ...badly injured and we've learned now that, you know, people have died and then... No, they haven't. This other, ...the other attack on the metro. Uh, I take that metro quite a bit. Um, no, you don't. You know, and it's just, it's just surreal, but we're hunkered down at home and trying to come to terms with it all. Tell me about it. 